Hi everyone, I'm Marie and me and the Magical Fairies are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Ignore that loud sound, they're just breaking stuff out there. So excited to come in. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas and as you can see we have friends all over the world joining us. Thank you all so much for being here today. Hey, it's almost Christmas. I promised to wear my ugly Christmas sweater. You are welcome. And today we are going to be needle felting wild and wooly Christmas trees. This project is so easy, super duper fun. There's just a couple of different ways I'll show you you can do them. And any either one is a no-brainer, but it's just a good time to hang out and felt with friends. So welcome, say hi if you're in the live chat, which is over there somewhere. You'll see people are saying hi and where they're from. So join on in. And if it's your first show, say I'm new so our community can welcome you. And on that note, Amy, it's her first show. Welcome so much to Wooly Wednesday. We have Teresa in the UK. Hi, hi Jackie in North Carolina. Hey Janine in Ohio. I see Ava in Norway, uh, Brianna in Colorado, and so many more of our friends. We're just so grateful for you to be here today and hang out with us. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. So we have, what we do is you participate in the live chat and at the end of the show, we're gonna give away prizes. So you can offer your own ideas, you can have a laugh. People are always connecting in the live chat. Tell us what you're gonna make or what color your Christmas trees are gonna be or ask a question and you're gonna be entered to win a prize at the end of the show. But if we don't answer your question or you don't win a prize at the end, you can always leave a comment down below after the show and tell us like your favorite takeaway or just whatever nonsense you want to tell us about the show. And on that note, we have two prizes to give away from last week. So thank you to everyone who commented. I read every single one and we heart them at least, even if we can't comment. Uh, Meg said that she loves the ornaments and will try those. She just made her first gnome. So last week we made a polar bear and a little needle felted dog and they, they left in draft mode, but these are the two ones uh, that we finished to hang on the tree and lots and lots of those popping up in our Facebook group. So you can, after the show, you can join the group. And the other winner is Ruth Olson. So congratulations to Meg Egert. I hope I said that right, E-G-E-R-T and Ruth Olson. You won our prizes that we gave away last week. So congratulations and welcome everybody to the show. The fairies are right off the sidelines here, just itching to share some fun stuff with you. And the first up is the very magical fairy, Hannah. Yay! Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Fairy Hannah here, hoping everyone's having a beautiful holiday season. We wanted to give a special thanks and a, a big warm hug to one of our lovely fellow felters out there, Miss Gail Slosker. She sent us some awesome yummy goodies and snacks and we just appreciate you so much and it's just so kind of you to, to do that for us and, and share that with us. So thank you Gail and thank all of y'all for being such a wonderful and supportive community. We really appreciate y'all. Alrighty. <laughs> Next up, I got Miss Becca for y'all. Hi guys, Barry Becca here, long time no see. Um, I brought some fun friends to hang out with you today. So first off, I wanted to show you, this is our ice skater ornament, and she is absolutely adorable. Look at all that sack of fun she has just waiting for you. My favorite part, actually, is her little skates. Oh, it's just the cutest thing in the world. But um, we have her in a kit, of course. I wanted to show you what she comes with. You have all the fiber you would need and more. Um, this little fabric um, swatches. You can, of course, use your own, but we have some fun festive ones. So you can make her little skirt and, of course, that nice little goodie bag that she has. Of course, you have the, the fun Chanelli stems there for the ice skates and a little jingle bell, of course. So she is awesome. And then we also have my little friend right here. The sweet and simple fox, um, my spirit animal, of course. <laughs> but this is an awesome starter kit. It has all the wool you need, the core wool, the foam, and the needles. These are great. I wanted to show you because if you had any last minute stocking stuffers you needed or if you do like New Year's Eve um, gifts as well, these are perfect for you. Um, they're super fun and super beginner friendly. 
or if you just um, are done with all your holiday gifts and you just want something a very relaxing project, you know, put on those Hallmark movies, get some hot cocoa, you know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> these um, fun friends are just waiting for you. <laughs> so next I have um, Fairy Holly. <laughs> So speaking of stocking stuffers, I have two more of our 2D um, painting with wool kits to show you. We have the Monarch, which is a complete kit. It comes with all um, printed instructions and photos and your wool and needles and foam. And it's cute. I love this one. It was my first kit that I did when I started working here. And so... You know, since I don't ever finish anything, I'll tell you that this one is very doable for a beginner. <laughs> and then we have our Cabin in the Snow, which is also a great little kit that's, um, oh, there we go. There's the, there's the real thing. Um, this one comes with the felt sheet and the wool pack, and our instructions are on line so it's a video tutorial so it's cute and I kind of wish I was there right now having my cocoa <laughs> with a stack of goodies <laughs> wait Janlin says it's snowing in New York in Albany so. oh yeah I my it's on my Facebook it showed that three years ago like on Tuesday or my something too. it was snowing here yeah. so and it's what 80 degrees now hot <laughs> anyway I'm done rambling and I'm gonna give you Miss Fairy Ann <laughs> Hey y'all, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. I am sharing with you today our Armature Starter Bundle. If you're just looking to jump into the 3D sculpture scene or just starting to work with Armature, this is a great starter pack. You're going to get a variety of all different kinds of Armature uh, from, from thinner Armatures like the 22 gauge and even the... He's hiding from me right now, but <laughs> the 32 gauge armature, you're going to get really thin armatures that are great for claws, all the way up to thicker armatures like the 12 gauge and 14 gauge armature, which would be great for uh, building the, the, like a spine or the, or the base of a, of a skeleton. It's also going to come with some CW1 core wool and three glass eyes. 4 millimeter, 7 millimeter, and 9 millimeter. So that's also a great way to gauge what size is needed for your project. Thank y'all so mm -hmm. much. Lots of love, but mostly lots of weather reports happening right oh, now. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, okay, but we, we can't go on without Noelle saying she wants the caddy. Oh, the caddy <laughs> is so cute, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Next up is Fairy Kayla. <laughs> Hi everybody, Fairy Kayla here. I am showing off these awesome locks that we've got. You can't see it, but there's a tree down here that we're, that we're doing today. <laughs> and it's got these awesome enchanted pine locks in them. So we sell them by the ounce and I'll just get up in the camera here and show you just this awesome mm -hmm. goodness all these different shades of green, like spruce, kind of fir, piney type green. So fun. Hi, Kayla, <laughs> love, pretty, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Mock salad, says Diane Porter. Oh, it kind of does. I don't know if I'd ever want to try it, but <laughs> to felt with it, it's awesome. <laughs> and I had a question for everybody. Have you seen that Christmas tree that stars in all the action movies? <laughs> What, what about the Christmas tree that stars <laughs> in the action movie? You may have heard of him. He's a guy called uh, Spruce Willis. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My daily dose of embarrassment. <laughs> I'll turn it back over to you, Marie. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just see a big round of hearts for the fairies? That is our very magical crew. They, For those of you who are new to us and Living Felt, uh, we are Living Felt Felting Supplies and FeltingTutorials.com, which is our online school. But the fairies are the ones who answer the phones. They answer your emails. They make absolutely everything that we share with you. And they pack your orders, too. So they are just lots and lots of fun to be around every day. <laughs> make us laugh and make us smile. So thank you all for being here with us, too. Really fun. But today, as Kayla showed you the locks, we are making these fun locks trees just a few supplies to get those going. I'm going to get my ornaments out of the way 
and let's do that so thank y'all for sharing so much i know there's people all over the world we're seeing from the mountains of new mexico to ontario we said i know i saw so many else just lots of fun places you guys are maybe what we can do is uh if you're on the live show today i don't know maybe like take a picture outside your window or share a picture from your home in our Facebook group after the show. Now we always get bombarded with requests to join the Facebook group after the show. So please answer the questions uh, that are there. Make sure you read all our guidelines. There's no linking out. There's no marketing, no smarmy, spammy stuff like that. It's just a really fun, inspiring group. And everyone's really, really nice and supportive. So make sure you ask, answer those questions. Um, so let's jump into today's project. What do you say, Anne? Sounds excellent. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, so these are really lots of fun. They're just, you know, there's so many things you can do with needle felting, and these are pretty whimsical, pretty light, something as uh, Becca was mentioning, something you can, needle felting something you can do while watching the Hallmark Channel. I'm pretty sure that I've watched every Christmas special between Netflix and Amazon, <laughs> good, bad, and ugly. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm watching like Sugar Rush, which I've never watched before. I've, I've rewatched The Great British Bake Off and the holiday versions as well. <laughs> what are you needle felting to right now? Because I, I could use another good Christmas movie that isn't uh, the girl being swept off her feet by a prince. Mm-hmm. Mm yep. Yeah, me too. I know. Okay. So y'all, thank you for being here. Let's make some Christmas trees. This is really a lot of fun. And for those of you who are brand new to needle felting, you're going to find it easy. And for those who are a bit of veterans, well, you're going to go, oh yeah, we're just doing the same thing we always do. Let's look at uh, the supplies, which are really super duper basic. And I'll tell you about the sizes of these trees in just a moment and about how much fiber to expect to use. So I'm going to park those over here. This little guy too. We're gonna to start with our CW1 core wool and this is the roving. Um, the roving comes in long strips like this and the batting comes in like great big lofty sheets. The only difference between CW1 core wool and the roving CW1 core wool is the shape it comes in. Otherwise it's the same product. So I like the roving for projects like this because you can just reel it right out of the bag. We just pile it all in there and feed it out. We're going to use this and we're going to use those gorgeous locks that Kayla showed you. She dyed those. I'm going to be using a coarse needle, 36 triangle. You can use a tool holder like this little tool holder or not. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is very easy to needle felt and I'm pretty much just going to be using the 36 triangle. To shape our trees, you have a choice. I'm going to be using our 18 gauge uh, wire. And for the smaller trees, you can just use a skewer if you want, and we do that really quite often. Probably gonna back out just a little bit here because we, we don't really need to be super duper close on, on this one today. Uh, I just want you to see what's going on. And uh, what are some other tools? So these guys, we're going to bring in our uh, pliers for just a minute, or you can use your hands if you want on these and maybe a few other things, like perhaps if you wanna put a base on it, you can bring a little bit of scrap felt. This is wool felt, this is a Sharpie marker, a pair of scissors, and I'm gonna show you how to mount one of them on just this little wood base. We sell these wood bases here. You can mount it on a wood block or nothing at all. This is just gonna be an option at the end, and perhaps some glue to attach this uh, to the wood and I just brought in my Gorilla Glue. You can use like super glue. You can use Aileen's glue, which is probably what I would prefer, but super glue or hot glue, whatever you generally like to work with is just fine. Now Anna's going to interrupt me from time to time with your questions if there are any or maybe some of your bright ideas. That's totally cool. Chime on in. Let's just make it interactive and have fun. So thanks for being here y'all. Okay, we're going to start off with the wire armature. This is an 18 gauge cloth covered armature uh, pretty common it does come in that little armature bundle and we use it all the time it depends on how tall you want your tree to be but i like to have a big handle to work with so the first thing we're going to do is bend this and make a little hooky do and we're going to start wrapping our wool let's do it okay start with your piece I'm just gonna bend a few inches down, just enough so that I can get a pretty good hook for my wool. And then I wanna pinch this so that it's gonna be really quite narrow. 
and we're going to reel out our core wool here and just start with a length that's long enough for you to control that's comfortable. I like to go about 18 inches or so, uh, something about like this. Now this is how big and fluffy it is. This is the roving again. So what you wanna do is split it down into thin little increments and go even thinner than this. And here's why. The thinner your wool is, the easier it's going to be to control and if you can keep the loft out of your wool uh, as we're wrapping it, if we can make it really, really tight, then we don't have to needle felt it as much up close to this wire. So with this hook, what I like to do is run the wool right through here. Think of it like a little shepherd's hook, but instead of nabbing a, nabbing a sheep, we're just nabbing the wool from the sheep. And then if you want, you can go ahead and ratchet this hook down all the way if you like. Once you have your wool in there, you can flatten this all the way. And then I'm even going to twist the very top around. It doesn't need to be all the way. Now you could double this down the whole length if you want, but what I want is this sticking off so that I can use it to twist and control. And I'm going to put this end up a little bit just so that it isn't poking me and poking into my foam. So that's just becomes like a little way to hold on to my tool. Okay. So we've got our wool hooked over and I'm going to pull it back. Take your thumb, fold this right over and we're going to twist, letting a little bit go off the end here. Some of you already know this really quite well and notice how tight I'm holding it. That is flush and tight and there is no air. You can fold this over if you want and give a couple of more twists. And all we're gonna do right now is cover the length of the wire that we wanna cover for our tree with one layer or however far this goes. We can go up and down. So here we go, we're just gonna twist. Once you get going a little bit, then I like to switch my hands and switch my direction so that I can control it a little better. So all I did was flip it around and using these two fingers to absolutely hold tension. If you are working with a fiber other than our CW1 core wool, uh, you might not find it as grippy, but this really grips onto itself. The key is just that I need to hold on to it at this point. And I need to hold on to it at this point and not let go of it until I just tack down the ends. But notice that the middle is all keeping its shape. Now, I want my tree to be maybe about this long. Uh, I'll grab my ruler here. It's not all that long. Right now we have mm, going on seven inches and that is about right for the trees I'm making. This great big one was eight inches and the trees I'm making today are gonna to be seven inches. So this one is eight inches tall. Once you get to about that mark where you wanna stop, then twist around and around and notice that all I do is, you know, let go just a little bit, but I never let go all the way. If you feel like you need to let go all the way at any point, just use your felting needle and tack it in place. Now, wrap it all the way back up. Now, you might have heard that you can't go you know, up and down or you can't change directions, but you can do this layer by layer if you go thin. In the beginning, when I first started felting, I didn't really know to do these little thin layers, and when I wanted to make something big, I would put down a whole bunch of wool. Um, look, it just holds by itself now. Now, I'm gonna tack it down a little bit so it doesn't unravel as I roll around it some more, but this fiber will stay. In the beginning I would try and put down a whole bunch of wool and then needle felt all the way through it and what happens is sometimes you get a hollow middle or you have so much air in there that it's very difficult to get a nice tight dense structure. If you want something dense or even semi-dense um, then do it this way in these real thin layers. And now today's trees don't actually need to be rock hard and that's fun because you can get them, you can get the bodies going pretty well.
the bodies, the under tree, your under tree going pretty well. That's all I really need to tack it down at this point. So you don't have to worry about banging into the wire. Then you just start with your next wrap of stuff. Now in the beginning, I'm going to start from the tree down until from the top down until I get this cone, the top part of the cone, more the shape that I want. And then later we'll start up from the bottom. So let me put one more layer on this one just so you see. What you want to do is whenever you start a new layer, go ahead and draft this out so it's a little bit more narrow. Put it on where you're going to start it and just tack it down to start. Just tack that down. Again, this is a 36 triangle. I'm choosing it because it is coarse and that helps me compress the wool nice and firmly on these under layers. Audrey asks, does your wire have to be cloth covered or could you use a different type like a pipe cleaner? Uh, you could use a pipe cleaner, but what you'll find is that a pipe cleaner is much more bendy at this point and it doesn't really hold the shape that you want. So it kind of wants to squirrel around. A pipe cleaner, I think, you could double over a few so that they have a little more of a rigid spine, which is what we're going for here. Um, but Or for a little tree, I would still double it over. On my littlest tree, this one has nothing in the middle. This little guy has nothing. So you don't have to have a spine, um, but you could also use a skewer. I just think that for a project like this, that the pipe cleaner is a little bendy and I don't get this action down here that I can really control it nicely. Again, so I'm all the way down here and I want to build up this bottom. Now, when you get to where the base is gonna be, you can always go around and around a few times and start to build up because that's gonna be much more dense. We are going to repeat this, always tacking down at the beginning and the end of each length of fiber. And if you have this really compressed, you don't need to needle felt this whole length at this point if you have it really compressed. You can though, you don't want this end to get super messy and just string down. So you can at each phase at this point, just needle felt right into that base and start to flatten what's going to be the bottom of your tree there. So this is just the beginning and this one has just a few more layers on it. So this looks like a you know hot dog that doesn't have its <laughs> just a hot dog that doesn't have its uh, outer shell on it. Maybe it hasn't been dipped in the batter. It'd be good for a corn dog. So I'm going to just bring us up to the next level and show you how you get from here to get more of that, that cone shape. So keep building up your layers. And this isn't very much wool at all. I mean, we're talking like just over an ounce or so for the trees we're making today. So I'm going to start now at the base. You see how I've got the top kind of starting to be a cone. There's enough fiber actually pretty much on the top of that tree for me. And I want to build from here up so that we get a real nice shape to it. But this is still for me a very slender tree, which is what I like. And we just tack it down in the beginning. And you can now at this point go over the base, what's going to be the bottom of your tree a few times. You have, and just, you just want to start, keep now controlling that so that you just stay level with where you are and you start to build up girth. So go around it a few times. You're still holding your tension. You don't want this to be so lofty that you have to needle felt a ton at each stage. And you don't have to go all the way up the tree. So you can snake your way back up and down as you go. But what you'll notice is when I get to this stage, I am needle felting because we only wanted to build up that initial core very strong. And I'm at least going to needle felt this tree to like at least to medium, perhaps. So if we do our test here it should at least be rare <laughs> it shouldn't be it shouldn't be it shouldn't be airy like this you shouldn't be able to just squash it and distort it so on our firmness test this here is like if you're pressing this part of your hand finger and thumb together this is rare this is medium this is well done and very well done so for these trees they can be somewhere between rare and medium in a pressure test but if you go, go a little more towards medium, so that means after you've built up the first couple of base layers, go ahead and needle up and down. Now, I know that some people like to wrap the wool around and then bind it with string, or you can even bind it with 
yarn or wool yarn or twist the same core wool. It's just not my flavor so much to do that. I like to kind of build up these even layers. So if that's more how you've learned or what you like to do, that's an option too. We're just going for under tree. What's happening out there in our BFF land, Anne? Oh, it's so fun. Everyone's getting expired and inspired already. Barbara wants to make use this method to make holly bushes. Karen wants to make a wreath. I think Colleen's going to do a Christmas village. Oh, village. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cute. Okay, so again, you're just going to repeat, and I just want to get a couple of little trees here, so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that uh, we put the locks on, but this is kind of what we're going for under tree. Remember you can spin this wool with your hands and just get it all to grip down and use whatever tools you like. I just like to use the coarse needle. Some people might like the clover clacky tool or even the pen tool so let me show those to you. I know I have some. Here's mine. So this is, I call this the clover clacky tool because <laughs> it's kind of noisy when my dogs could still hear. They hated when I used to this tool. <laughs> it's like disturbed their nap right next to my chair. Like, excuse me, do you have to make so much racket? <laughs> so this is the 8900, mm -hmm. and all you do is it locks or unlocks, so you have to unlock it, and then you can just pound through here. The, with tools like this little guy, they have fine needles in them, usually like our 40 triangle. And when you have your needles so close together, you kind of need fine, fine needles. There's no way to automatically disengage the sheath. It's there for protection and great for kids, but you can rubber band around this if you're just driving you nuts so that it holds up. It's not my favorite tool. I like to use it to round out a spear, but I do like the pen tool is a great option or uh, is a great option. It's just that, oh, this one's tight now. The, the pen tool is a great option if you need something a little bit bigger for comfort for your hands. And it's got three little needles right next to each other. This is the 8901. We just call it the pen tool. But it is a great option. And if you leave this pink part of the sheath on, it's not going to go so deep that you should bang into your wire. You can still go at an angle. If you're making something much larger, you can take this off and tend to get a little more distance. You don't really need it. You only need to go as deep as the barbs are on the needle but these are options um, if you need something just a little more comfortable than holding a single needle or a single needle tool. Leslie shares that she's having some trouble keeping the very top of her tree pointy. Do you have any mm. tips for keeping Oh sure. Shape? So this is this is about all as pointy as as I keep mine. So what we do when we're needle felting this top part and I'll get this wool to lay down is I come at it from this angle. So the first thing is not to put too much wool up there. I only did a few passes to get it this big, but you have to you really have to taper that wool so that you don't put it even pass, 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 pass. At some point when you wrap, you're gonna to have to pause your wool here and let it just keep filling out here. So don't keep putting wool on the top and um, when you get up here, you can needle felt in this direction and notice the angle. I'm not going in just like this and banging into the wire. I'm going at this angle to push the wool and start to shape it. I like to use the same view that you're looking at. You're looking at the horizon of the piece to the foam. I use that to visually shape things that I'm working on. So when I'm needle felting, I'm needle felting right here and I will turn the piece and then work on the next part in that same way so that I'm using the contrast between the wool and the foam to help me see how I'm shaping. But this is all I do right there. Very simple. So don't put too much wool on the top and then shape it. And if you have too much wool on the top, well then just add a whole bunch more to the bottom. <laughs> and it'll, it'll all work out. <laughs> it'll still be conical. But you can really, you can really flatten that wool down. Now remember that I didn't make this very, this very dense, so there's still a lot of room in it for shaping. And I would keep adding wool to this. This is the shape right here that I'm going for is just a, just a little more conical and not that much more. So you can see that this one is kind of skinny here. Just keep adding wool around the base this way and you'll be there.
that's all we're going for. So now we're ready to put our locks on. Are y'all ready? Are they ready for locks? Oh, we are okay. ready for okay. locks. Okay, good. So these are there's just two different ways I like to put the locks on. So first let's look at my my big tree. This tree, and we'll we'll look up and up and down so you can see it. So this tree is a little more wild and woolly, and you see that I can kind of uh, fluff him out, um, and he's really curly. The locks are put on um, differently than on this tree. This tree, uh, the locks are all going just vertical, and these locks are meant to stick out. So I'm just gonna show you both ways that I put these locks on, it's really up to you. This tree, I wanna tell you that the under tree measures eight inches tall. I think it's about three inches across the bottom. I didn't cover the bottom yet so that I could show you. Um, this one is three inches. So it's eight inches by three inches because I had a tree that was eight inches by three inches and I decided I really like that size. This is about two ounces of wool locks. And I think we said that the under tree must be around one uh, point, one and a quarter ounces. So it's really not even all that much. I, is this the one we weighed, Anne, the big one? We weigh the big one? Okay, so it's, yeah, I mean, one and a half ounces. So remember, it doesn't have to be rock hard. So this is uh, the fluffy tree. Let me show you how to apply the locks for the fluffy tree first. All right, so on your under tree here, you can just leave your wire on for now, that's totally fine. And when you get your locks, for those of you who don't know, now when I first started felting, I was thinking a lot about this when, uh, um, before coming here today. And you know, when I first started felting, I didn't even know what to call stuff either. I didn't know, I just got wool, I didn't know it was batting, that was the first thing I worked with. I got these things, I just call them curly, that curly curls whatever like a lot of y'all do wool curls this is uh, you know wool straight off the sheep we've washed it right here in house and we've dyed it and this is a it's variegated so what we have done we have multiple dye lots that we mix together but we also have multiple breeds so if you get this fiber from us you're gonna find that some is a little more delicate some's a little bigger some's a little more shiny some's a little more dull and I think that makes for a really interesting tree it really adds a lot of character to your tree to kind of mix those locks up and just have fun with it. So when you get your locks, and many of you probably already know this, but when you look at the lock, one end is the natural end, the natural curly end, the way it grows on the sheep, and one end is going to be the cut end. And sometimes you just have this big cluster like this and you're not sure who's who's who. So you don't have to overthink it, but if you can grab a little cluster, look for what might be a, a curly tip in here and grab the curly tip out. The curly tip is going to be the way it grows off of the sheep and then you're going to have a more blunt end like this right there that is that's cut on the sheep. You don't have to sort all these but you might like to separate them a little bit and if you get super teeny tiny ones we'll save them for the top. If you get really really delicate ones save them for the top. For these tree for the wild the wild tree the big one what I like to do is just grab some locks and the first layer I'm going to put on so that they kind of just stick straight out. I don't even cover, I don't even cover the bottom, the underneath with any color. So my first layer I'm just going to put on like this and let the locks just kind of stick out because I want the whole thing to be roughly on the bottom. Let me put a few of those on and see if you can see. I'm giving you a, a light felt sheet. The dark green locks are blending right into the dark gray. I need something. Okay, Anne's going to bring me something to add a little, a little contrast so that y'all can, uh, y'all can see. Because all I have in here are dark colors, so she's going to bring me a little felt sheet so that you can see uh, the locks a little better. Uh, this first layer we're just going to have sticking off. See how long these are? How much they stick out? That's totally fine. I think it adds for a really interesting tree. And if your tree's gonna be up, well then you can have them go down as well. Light gray, oh that's nice. Okay, so thanks y'all for your patience. This will help some. I'll try and work on this too. So for anyone just tuning in, we're just putting wool felt down so that you can see what's happening in the lock, in lock land. 
and gives me the thumbs up. Okay, so hopefully this looks okay. Um, and then here's some, here's some blocks. Okay, so all I wanna do initially is I like the curly bits to be out and so this is, the, this is the cut end as it came off the sheep. It's a little more frizzy. And then this is the, the curly tip, a little more delicate, a little more cute. Don't worry too much about the vegetable matter. You can just pick it out little by little. There's not that much, but this is, this is, these are really clean fleeces. And the first locks, um, if they're too, too long, you can fold them in half. But I'm just going to tack them straight in. We are going for 100% coverage on this tree. That's why I'm not putting any base color down. So just find your way through your locks, and I really do apply them kind of one or two or three at a time. So this is my naturally curly end. So these are much shorter. This is my cut end, and I'm putting the cut end just right down on the base of the tree and letting these be as long as you want. For me, they're about an inch and a half sticking off. I'm gonna go around the whole tree doing like this bottom skirt. Marlene asks, if my locks are too long, can I cut them or will that harm the lock? I'm gonna show you, I would rather you not cut them, Marlene, if they're long, and I'm gonna show you in just a second how we vary this once we get off the bottom. And I do have some long locks, so I'm only gonna show you, uh, we won't have time to go around this, this whole tree and fill the whole thing, but let me do a little bit more here. And I do have long locks in this mix somewhere. Um, even so, even if they're not all that long, we would do them more like we would do hair on a doll. And that is, uh, see that's a cut end, that, that would be a mistake. And that is to fold them in half. So now I'm gonna move this lock just a little bit up the tree to do the next layer. And I'm gonna leave a little space because I'm gonna needle felt this part down. Um, and actually needle felt right, you can actually needle felt right in the middle. So Marlene, this is what I do with long locks is I needle felt right in the middle and then just use both ends. Rather than cutting them, needle felt in the middle and let it just fold out. A lot of them, and let's see what I have here in my mix. A lot of these are, are kind of short, but here's an example of a, longer, of a longer lock. Now, I love this and I want it to stick out somewhere, so I might save that, but what you can do, and see how curly and cute it is, just take this one and fold it right in half, needle felt in the middle, and just anchor that right down. Just needle felt it right into your wool, and then just fold it over and let it fluff on out. Now this is the wild and wooly version. So it doesn't matter whether you needle felt right into the tail or whether you fold it over. And you can tame the whole thing later. I wouldn't worry about taming it too much now. Meaning, let these things just be a little wild, a crazy, and then when you know where you want them, if, like if you know that you want to tame that down later, well, you just come and give it a tack or two. You don't have to flatten the whole the whole thing out, and it's going to make a really nice little ruffly tree. So let's do a little bit more, build up this side just a little bit more, and then we'll look at the other way uh, to apply the locks or another way. Barbara asks, are they stuck on very securely, or if you pulled the tip, would they come yeah. right out? Yeah, you could pull them out. So don't give them to someone who's going to pull them out. <laughs> don't give them to your toddler, you know, or your four-year-old. It's, it's a decoration, you know. It's like something you put up on the mantle. Um, yeah, it's, it's not something you want, to give, you want to give kids to play with. You could certainly pull it apart. Mm -hmm. They're not glued in there. Terry asks, is there, do you have any tips for keeping the locks from getting fuzzy as you're making it? Um, just be as, it really is going to depend on the locks that you have. So if your locks are super delicate, you're just going to have to understand that there's going to be some fuzz. So the best thing you can do is just be, be delicate with them. If your locks are super delicate, be delicate with them. These locks are getting a little bit fuzzy, but I just wouldn't be overly rough. Just try not to be overly rough with them. To, to keep the fuzz down, remember that when you go to separate them, grab the natural tip as opposed to the cut tip and pull towards, separate towards the cut tip. That's one, that's one tip. 
um, and don't just willy-nilly spread them out. If you just if you just pull at them off whatever cluster they come in, they're more likely to be fuzzy. That cut end is probably going to be more fuzzy already. Um, so just if you if you're folding them over like this, expect that cut end to contribute to the external fuzz. If you don't want it, then only anchor the cut end onto the base of the tree. I don't mind a little bit of fuzz. You know, they're going to sit up on a mantle. I think something that happens when we needle felt is we get so close to our work that we um, we view it in a way that it isn't naturally viewed, you know, and that's super in the macro, super, super close up. But most of the time, you're going to put this up on a shelf or up on a mantle, and no one's going to be scrutinizing it, even you, at that same level of detail. I like to mix up the lights and the darks a little bit. I think it just adds a lot of interest and depth. And some get anchored and some get doubled. It really depends on the lock and how they come out. But overall, this one is very non-uniform. Um, I like the, the uh, wool sticking up off the base of the tree and I'm willing to really mix up the different types of locks. Like this is a, this is a real dark patch. I don't know if y'all can see it. So instead of staying there, I'll just scoot over here and mix it up a little bit. If the locks get super fuzzy, is there any way to add curl or smooth them out? You know, I am not a big chemical person. I know that uh, folks, some folks use conditioner on their, you know, some of the, the things that they make. It's just not really in my nature to pull out something like that. So I would say, you know, go with what you're comfortable with and test small. If you're gonna test something like that, don't make eight trees and then start applying conditioner. <laughs> Instead, I would, you know, either make a little tree or condition your locks beforehand, but you you kind of can't get the, the locks back together if they're so roughed up, you know. So if you want to tame, some people might use like a spray-on conditioner or a leave-in conditioner. It's I've read that people do it. It's just not something that I tend to do. I kind of accept the wool as it is. So what I'm showing you right here, this is what you're going to do to build up the whole tree. And you can see, like if you look at the profile, how floofy and big this tree is compared to the base. It makes for a really bushy kind of Christmas tree. If you just pile the locks on like this, you know, anchor the bottom and build them, build them up very thick. Um, and then you'll, you'll taper them as we get to the top. You'll just do, uh, use your shorter locks and put them on a little less densely than on the bottom, but keep stacking up and you're going to get a tree that looks like this very fluffy, curly and big. And then if there's anywhere you want to tame it, like say, oh, this guy's he might've picked him up on the table, but if there's anywhere you want to tame it, you can even use a finer needle and tack them down. But I think part of the beauty of these is that they're just big and fluffy, kind of wild and fun. Now to get a tree that's a little more tame, what you can do is just a vertical application of the wool. And I'll show you that. Well, why don't we jump to this little guy because I intentionally left only half of him done. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit for you uh, because he's tiny. And let me pull this this way. He's just a little guy, which is kind of fun. Now the difference with this guy is he was actually built just on a skewer. He has no wire inside of him. And I just twisted him on a skewer like we do in our owl and uh, some of our gnome tutorials as well. So instead of leaving him on the wire, I built him on the skewer and took him off. And then this is, this is the side that's undone. So we'll fill this in. So what you see here is a vertical application of the fiber. And this is all we do. Just whichever locks you want, and we're going to start with the bottom. Let me just pick what I have. Let's start with this right here. You're going to get, uh, with, with locks, you're going to get some debris, so just plan for it. Plan to, plan to kind of catch it. Um, these are farm fresh, <laughs> farm <laughs> fresh locks. Lots of fun. So here's what I do is I just take that, I'm going to put it 
right here and we're going to needle felt more of the length of this lock here. So I start with the bottom and work my way up. I do extend off the bottom a little bit. That's just a personal preference. And then I'm going to needle felt in the lock up the tree. Peg so yeah. Oh, uh, Peggy asks, are you positioning the lock so that the cut end oh. is pointing up? Yes, absolutely. I want the cut end, I want the natural curly end to be what we see, kind of see and appreciate as we go down the tree and the cut end is always going to be hidden um, by the next layer. So I put that one on and so like this is something a little more curly, a little more delicate, um, even a little less formed than this, but it's going to go beautifully right over this and you just decide how much you want to layer it. So I like to just straighten it out because they get all bendy. Um, I like to just straighten it out a little bit. If something's too fuzzy that I don't love, I just pull it out. And then I'm going to put this lock right over the top of the other one. And I don't mind if I get a, it, multiple lengths of overlap. What I want is interest. I want it to look interesting and cute. So like to see how long that lock was, how long it goes up. Well, I'll layer something else over it too because I don't want it to look stripey personally, but I'm not going to tack everything down. I'm just going to gently tack those down so they're kind of where I want them. So always the cut end is to the top and the natural. So here we go. This is this is the cut end. See how just kind of fuzzy that is? And then this is the, the natural tip. And it's not, uh, you know, it's not a mohair lock that's like got incredible sheen and the whole thing's just staying together. It's a wild and wooly lock. That's okay with me. I'm gonna, I'll put it right on top of this one um, here just to break up that long bit of color and anchor it in. Now you do have to be careful when you get to the top not to bang into your wire. Just take your time. This is when you, you know, you don't want to be looking right at the television when you do that. You want to be looking at your, looking at your tree. And these will make really cute gifts. Great, like see this delicate little thing. I want him, he's just so cute and sweet. I want him more towards the top. So I'll save him for the top and I'll use something a little bit larger, a uh, bigger curl meaning towards the bottom down here. Oh my goodness, we're having so much fun today. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Christina's going to make a purple lock tree. Oh, yeah. Terry's going to make a couple of these guys for her needle felted gnomes to hang out with. Exactly. <laughs> I was wondering how many people would make a, make a color tree. I was thinking like Holly might make a turquoise tree or something mm. fun <laughs> like oh, that. Yeah. Anne would make a teal tree. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah would be trying to figure out how to make a cactus tree. <laughs> yeah, so the only difference with this one is that we are going vertical. Now, you're going to use fewer locks for this, this method here than the bushy tree, for sure. So it might just depend on how far you want your locks to go, how you position them, because both look really cute, honestly. And you're just going to find your way through whatever locks you have, whether you get them from us or someone else. They're all going to work. You could make a white tree. You could even make a beige tree. A lot of fun you could have with this. A few of our felting friends want to know if they can use little fairy lights or little LED lights to decorate their tree with, or oh. if there would be a danger with it being too close I, to the wool. No, no. Wool doesn't burn, so I don't really see any issue with that. Um, I would say, though, to pay attention to those fairy lights if they're old. We got some uh, that we had around the shop when we first moved in, and we had jars up on shelves, and we would burn those fairy lights all day. And what did we get? We got, like, horrible acid Mm -hmm. Like the batteries that came in them just corroded the whole thing. So, and they don't get hot. So I don't know, just this really quality stuff from China, I guess. <laughs> but I would just say pay attention to those so that they don't ruin your stuff. Um, that would be more the concern. But the wool doesn't burn, and those should not be getting hot. They really shouldn't. So you should be pretty good there. We're gonna wrap up this little tree. Be careful your hands on the other side. If, you're, if your tree's tiny, just remember, be careful your hands on the other side. But I do wanna finish this little guy, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll put a bottom on our, on our bigger tree. Uh, we'll cover the bottoms of these, yes, with, um, with locks. I like to fill that in under there. 
but let's just add a few more little guys here. A couple of folks want to know if there's any type, any breeds of of sheep locks that are that would not be good for this project. I would, you know, I think it just really depends for you. I mean, you know, if you're going to be buying buying locks, and those who buy locks with us know that we always sell out. We just do such a large volume here, and we we wash <laughs> and process a lot of individual uh, sheep uh, for our locks, but it's very difficult for us to stay in stock. But I would just say, you know, get a good picture if you're buying the locks, and you probably want them curly. You know, you probably want them to at least have a bit of curl. So I would try not to buy something sight unseen. You're going to have to buy from the photo because you could even get a mixed breed that's just adorable and don't have to worry about having a specific breed. And you could buy a, a breed that you recognize and think would be nice and it'd be a really cruddy fleece. So mm. just don't buy sight, don't buy sight unseen. And whoever you buy locks from, beware of, I've heard lots of horror stories about people buying locks on eBay. Just, mm. just say, I mean, buy from... Buy from whoever, but make sure you see it. Well, now look at this little guy. I think he's super cute. And yeah, he's a little fuzzy, but so what? Well, sheep are too. <laughs> okay, so now we have little naked bottoms here, and all you want to do is pull your wool away so that you don't anchor that down if you want. This guy would be cute. You know what he'd be cute inside? A little music box. Remember we had a little music box that we made our, you know, we have it out there. Would you grab it? Absolutely. <laughs> we have a music box. Okay. I forgot we had that. We pulled out our Christmas trees, our wet felted Christmas trees that we made a few years ago. So underneath here, all I'm going to do is to especially take the stuff that seems the least formed and just tack it on there so that you cover up your bottoms. Just go straight on in. Now you could put felt on the bottom or whatever and we're going to uh, mount the, one of my big trees onto uh, a piece of wood and I'll show you how I did that. But for this little guy, I'm just going to, I might leave the, I'm going to see what, what comes of this music box. I think it's just a little platform actually, so I don't think I need to leave a hole to mount it. But you can just cover your bottoms if you want with locks or felt, or you could mount them on a wooden base or a wooden box, or I don't know what, you could hang it in the tree. <laughs> you could just set it on the mantle. You could sign it. So that's all you got to do to fill in the bottom is just let it let it be just as crazy or more crazy on the top. I don't know if Ann knows where that was. I sent her off on an errand and I don't know if she knows where they are. <laughs> They're in the shop, so it's like right under our nose. Do you know where? Oh, good. <laughs> okay. She, she succeeded. I was just telling them. I don't know if she knows where that was. I thought you might be digging in the Christmas box. Does it work? It does. Oh, okay, so we have to do this now. So I'm going to show you how to how to mount the other one on the bottom. But so here's our little, um, will he stand up? Oh, he will. Look, there he goes. So we'd have to maybe put a little blanket of snow. Oh. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> Yay. Oh, it stopped already. Do we have to wind it up? <laughs> Does it have to be wound up? It does. <laughs> Where do you wind it up? The, uh, if you uh, rotate the white base, oh, it'll... Here. I don't know my own toys. I bought this from someone on Etsy, so if you're looking for one, a couple years ago now, so... Oh, it's the Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh. Okay, darling. All right, so here you go. Here's the Sugar Plum Fairy. Now, oh, I love that. Makes me think of my friend Monica, because she's a ballerina. Oh. Okay, so now this one, um, this one, the bottom is still white and I have my wire sticking out. What I did was I took one of our little wooden discs here and I poked a little hole. Now because I'm lazy maybe, I don't know, I didn't drill it. I used my awl. <laughs> I did. I used my awl and I this wood is so soft that I just worked, I didn't want the hole too big, you know, I didn't want to fuss, and I worked a hole first from this side, and then from, well, it looks like that was the first one, first from this side, and then from this side until the hole passed all the way through. Then what you can do is take your little wire bit and run it through, just get it to the right size so that it runs through underneath, and then I fold it over so that it's contained. And you could wrap it around if you want, but this right here is enough for it to stand. And then I'm just going to glue onto the bottom of my wood and will help, you know, keep that 
um, piece of metal or that wire you can cut it just as short as you need it and then just glue that felt to the bottom of your Christmas tree there and then you can put it on whatever you want a table or whatever and it won't scratch or you could put it on your music box <laughs> so awesome and there you have it <laughs> I love it it's precious. That would be pretty cute with fairy lights, but you have to decide what to do with the battery pack if it's if it's spinning around. So, cool. I hope you guys are going to make some Christmas trees, and if you do, I hope you'll share them with us online. You can tag us on Instagram. i got to get better about Instagram. I've been saying that for a year, so that means 2021 has to be a year we get better about Instagram. So tag us. Did that pop up on Instagram, at livingfelt. You can find us on Facebook. If you're looking for supplies or if you just are looking for other supplies or you're looking for more free tutorials, we have free tutorials under our learn section of our shopping cart living felt. And if you're looking for like that next level project, something a little more in depth, maybe your wet felter, nuno felter, whatever you want to make a dragon or an incredible landscape, check out feltingtutorials.com. It's our online school. People are having lots of success and lots of fun and posting some amazing stuff. You'll see it in our Facebook group. Um, and if you have any questions, you can call us. We're real people. We are here Monday through Saturday. We're here Monday through Friday from 9 to 4, Saturdays from 10 to 4. And you can also use the Contact Us page on our website uh, to reach out to us and ask questions. But check out our website. We have lots of free resources and lots of information um, for you. And um, lots of fun to have. <laughs> so that was fun, huh? So I'm so fun. glad you found the music box. Me too. <laughs> that made uh. it for me today. That made it. That made it extra special. Okay, what do we got, Anne? It's price time, huh? It's price time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so today we have got. We're gonna, gonna give you two ounces of core wool and two ounces of enchanted pine lock, so you can make your very own trees. Yes. Yeah, same stuff. Same stuff. And you know, what? we'll send you some of the wire armature too. So just in case you don't have that, then you'll have everything you need to make yours. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're going to draw some names. Thank you all for playing with us. You ready? I'm hold. ready. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. You got one? Oh, I, I need one. one. I'm sorry. I'm not doing my job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoops. Okay, I dropped. I picked up the same one I dropped. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Who do you got? I have got Lee White. And I 